when you grow up you tend to get told that the world is the way it is and your your life is just to live your life inside the world try not to bash into the walls too much uh, uh, try to have a nice family life uh, have fun save a little money that's a very limited life life can be much broader once you discover one simple fact and that is everything around you that you call life was made up by people that were no smarter than you and you can change it you can influence it you can you can build your own things that other people can use um, once you learn that you'll never be the same again who are we the roots of a human being lie in the future living for the future is a way of living in the present as a being not totally determined by the circumstances of his existence. There is always more in us, in each of us individually, as well as in all of us collectively, than there is or ever can be in the social and conceptual worlds that we build and inhabit. They are finite in relation to us. We are infinite with respect to them. The truth about who we are is manifest in the two-sided nature of the mind. In some ways, the mind is like a machine. It is made up of modular components working according to formulas. In other ways, however, the mind is an anti-machine. It is neither modular nor formulaic. It can combine everything with everything else, its power of recursive infinity and it can extend its reach by defying the methods and assumptions on which it habitually relies, its power of negative capability. This second side of the mind is what we call the imagination. Nothing in the physical constitution of the brain, not even its plasticity of function, determines the relative influence of the machine and of the anti-machine. The organization of society and of culture and the course of life give greater or lesser space to the imagination. The history of politics is internal to the history of the mind. Life is the supreme good. The attributes of life are surfeit, our excess over all circumstance, fecundity, our faculty of seeing, doing, and making more than the established structure's countenance, and spontaneity, our ability to limit the power of the past over the present. Santayana described William James as so extremely natural that there was no way of knowing what his nature was or what came next. To be like that is to be alive. We forfeit this greatest good when we allow a shell of compromise and routine to form around us and surrender to the rigidified form of the self, the character which Heraclitus described as the destiny of each individual. Together, the shell and the character form a mummy within which we die many small deaths. It is in our interest to break the mummy up. We can break it up only by unprotecting ourselves. As we open ourselves up to other people and to the new, we become more human by becoming more godlike. We become more godlike the better to live not later, but right now. We live so as to die only once. To this end, we must dispel the illusions of false necessity, reshape the structure of society, and change the way we live. Illusions of false necessity corrupt the now dominant approaches to the study of society. These approaches sever the vital link between insight into the actual and imagination of the adjacent possible. 
in the hard, positive social sciences, economics first among them, rationalization is in command, explaining the established arrangements in a fashion that suggests their naturalness and their authority. In the normative disciplines of political philosophy and legal theory, what prevails is humanization, the pseudo-philosophical grounding of practices such as compensatory redistribution designed to humanize a reality that we feel powerless to remake. In the humanities, free reign is given to escapism, the adventures of a subjectivity, unable and unwilling to reckon with the established regime of society. The votaries of these rationalizing, humanizing, and escapist tendencies pretend to be enemies. In fact, they act as allies to disarm the imagination and the will. Progressives used to believe mistakenly in blueprints. Now, for the most part, they lack any program. They see neither the direction nor the next steps. Their goal should be to struggle for a way of organizing society and culture that lays itself open to challenge and change, overthrows the rule of the dead over the living, diminishes the dependence of change upon crisis, and as a result, weakens the hold of hierarchies of class and role upon our dealings with one another. Under such a structure revising structure, we can have a better chance to be both great and sweet. We can engage without surrendering and connect without losing ourselves. We cannot await the reformation of the social order. Each of us must foreshadow it in the path of his existence. We do not live in the future, either the political future of a new society or the providential future of divine redemption. We live right now. All we have for sure is life in the present. It is by the way we live as well as by the way we think that we break the chains of false necessity. In seeking to change the world, we change ourselves and awaken to a larger life. We draw further away from the idols and closer to one another and become deathless temporarily. <laughs>